Welcome. Welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome everybody here to our illustrious meeting. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, we have a brief announcements period that were these are announcements for the good of the uh, of the of the people or the good of the group. Second, we'll then let our speaker present for up to about an hour or so. Third, we will then have questions and answers. And then fourth is our infamous rebuttal period where you can comment on or off subject about for up to usually about five minutes or so. We generally wound up about nine o'clock and the speaker usually gets the last word. Um, with that, I'm gonna open it up now to Charlie for our general announcement period. Okay, welcome everyone to meeting number 3000. 640 by the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. First of all, we have a Google email group, which uh, you are invited to join. There's instructions at the top center of our website. We also maintain a meetup group. In the meetup group, you only get one or two emails per week indicating the topic on the next meeting. So please uh, take advantage of this electronic notification systems. And although I'm not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. Uh, on November the 6th, we will be hosting another candidate. This one's from the uh, Democratic Party, Marie Williams will come and tell about us about her campaign for office. She stands for such things as the Green New Deal, universal health care, and criminal justice reform. She's got my book. On November the 13th, a long-term uh, anti-war group, pacifist, uh, Pache Bene, and they, they have offer a nonviolent service. Uh, we'll be doing a presentation. So if you want to keep up on the nuclear issue, this would be a recommended program. On November the 20th, uh, it is in the news, we'll be discussing the nation's infrastructure. So if you think we should make uh, capital improvements to the United States of America, we'll see you on the 20th of November. On November the 27th, Something of a college regular and an academic, Jan Lee, will be talking about racism and how our concepts of racism are currently out of date. Moving into December, we're going to return to ecological topics. These are the big shots. The Illinois Environmental Council will be telling us about Illinois environmental issues and their environmental scorecard which they put together on legislation. Moving into December 11th, we're gonna have a gentleman in charge of an organization and he's gonna tell us how to talk to difficult people. Right, Charlie. We know that from being with the college. Talk yeah, we about know Charlie. Difficult. What? I said, we know Charlie. <laughs> difficult people, that's for sure. Yeah, we know. It should be mandatory. Anyhow, moving on to December the 18th, a gentleman who will be returning, um, and he's going to be talking about, he's put together and holding services. He calls it the Church of Revolution, of the, of the revolution. So uh, Reverend Charlie Earp will be coming here uh, in December. Moving into January the 8th, an organization I've been affiliated with for a number of years regarding eco-villages and sustainable communities sure. is called America Walks, which is for pedestrian advocacy, an sure. interesting topic altogether, uh, how you can go without an automobile and uh, conduct your affairs. Yeah, we know. Um, the last one we booked, um, or no, on on the 15th, wait, the 22nd, 
Yes. Uh, we just booked the Alliance for a Just Society. Uh, and they have a strategy. And it's a bi binary program. They also have a national campaign for transit justice. So if you'd like to speak, the next open dates are January the 15th and January, or no, uh, yeah, the 15th and the 29th of January. Okay, Tim, that's about it. Take it away. All right, I also wanna also advocate that we do have another group that also meets at the college. It's uh, our Dallas campus and they too meet on Thursdays. They're, uh, they are gonna be meeting again. Uh, I guess they're not meeting for the next couple of weeks as too many people are out of town, um, but they got some openings for speakers uh, coming up very soon. And uh, it, the next open meeting is November 11th. So um, if you're wanting to uh, have them come in, uh, you know, um, we'll be able to take care of it. Is there any other announcements that the Green Party or any other members like to do before we get started? All right, with that, uh, I'll close the official um, announcements period and we'll let uh, Adam Broad get on with his uh, presentation on um, uh, the Green Party and why he feels he's a good candidate. So Adam, if you're ready, uh, take it away. Unmute, Adam. Gotcha. And the rest of you, please mute while he's presenting. I'll keep mine open because I got a mute switch on my mic. Well, first of all, I am Adam Broad, and I am running for Congress in the Illinois 10th District, and I had not officially announced that until just now, so... Uh, Yes, I am. I'm moving forward. Uh, thank you. Thanks to the support and recognition of the Cook County Green Party, the uh, West Suburban Democratic Socialists of America, my wife and friends. I've, I've decided to move forward. Some of you know or don't know. I don't know that I uh, ran as a write in candidate as a Democrat in 2020 after I was uh, thrown off the ballot and what I refer to as uh, it was legally stolen. My ballot access was legally stolen. Uh, it, it was just standard operating procedure for, uh, you know, a machine party doing what it does. And uh, I've, I've never really liked it, but uh, looked the other way, perhaps, knowing that the, I was in a party that did that sort of thing occasionally and, and knew that I needed to get double what I needed to get on the ballot. But, uh, my wife was uh, was uh, sick with cancer, and uh, I was limited in how much I could be out there. And uh, I was fortunate to have a campaign manager that got up before work. I'd like to thank her, Colleen Levine, who was getting up at four in the morning and going out to the metros and getting signatures, and only to see about three hundred fifty thrown off the roll. And then uh, they gave us three days, including Christmas and Christmas Eve to produce 50 affidavits to get our ballot access or spend money to get caught up in the courts playing that game. So I wanted very much to, to have my say, which I was denied last time around. And the reason why is we're in a rigged system that of legalized bribery that bankrupts and kills us. We absolutely must fight this system. Our lives depend on it. We're facing a climate emergency. And if we don't take comprehensive, we don't, we don't seek a comprehensive remedy for this. We are, according to our own defense analysts and uh, the scientists, we're, we're facing grave times ahead. And through the floods and fires we're seeing right now in real time, we're already seeing that we are at the start of a catastrophe. I think the, the remedy, uh, the fix for that is grassroots organizing, a more perfect union, the, the political parties, the corporate duopoly, 
have us divided amongst each other. And I'm sorry, there's a terrible echo from my wife's computer. Very distracting. Sorry about that. So uh, I, I feel I have to go back to doing what I used to do for a living and organize and take it to the streets and bring people together and make a fight of it. And what we stand, what we stand to gain is jobs and a healthcare system we deserve and uh, no wars and no prison state for profit and a more, a more perfect union. And that's what I'm fighting for. And I don't plan to go on for an hour. I would like to talk to the people who took their time out to come here today. So I thank you for your consideration and uh, rather awkward announcement, but I'm okay with it. So you're basically now opening up the questions right away for your candidacy and all that basically stuff? Basically, I am. Okay. Well, um, you heard him. I, I think we're uh, ready for, uh, we've lost a couple people already. Um, all right, Adam, give us your broad outline of what you intend to do if you should get elected. I'm sorry, what was that? Well, let's go. Darren, if you want to unmute, it, now, now we can unmute and get everybody in. Ask your question direct. I know it's in the chat. So go ahead and unmute, Darren, and ask your question. Thank you. I just um, put on the chat, what would you propose as a fix for Social Security? Off the bat, first steps. Well, good question. There's two ideas I've been playing with. Uh, one is uh, remove the cap. I just think... It's something if we talk to voters, we could sell that. I mean, every working guy like myself pays Social Security tax on every dollar he earns. Why, why are wealthy people exempt from that? Uh, it makes no sense at all. If anything, we should reverse the cap. Like you should have to make over one hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars a year before you start getting taxed. The idea of like, oh, you're low income, we're going to tax every dollar. Oh wait, you're a billionaire, you don't have to pay anything, you know, because you don't owe anything to this country that other people die for, and you've had this benefit of becoming practically a lord. But nah, we're not going to bother you with Social Security taxes. I think those are just two ideas off the top of my head. Tax the wealthy, higher amounts. Of, um, nah, I think just even just taxing them exactly what I pay per dollar out of my check as a bus driver. Every dollar earned. No exceptions, no loopholes. Instant fix. And then expand maybe what Social Security can do for the American people. I believe Bernie introduced some sort of, a, if not legislation, idea about uh, a gap. In other words, they would go ahead and put the cap on at 138,000 and then pick it up again. I believe that Bernie said around a quarter of a million or 300,000. Okay. Which I, I kind of like the appeal to that because yeah. it gives you, it doesn't stop your incentive from earning. Four million. It does give you a chance to keep a little more and before you start earning more. I'd have to get the specifics on Bernie's program, but I thought it was a good idea to have that little gap. Someone, I had this Twitter debate about uh, should we allow the existence of billionaires? You know, I was like, and I thought, well, you know, I was thinking in terms of, you know, old school Eisenhower era, you know, like, well, it ought to be taxed at 91%. And then, you know, the, someone who was a lot more left than me said, no, oh, 100%. I said, wait, let's compromise. Let's make it 99.9% .9 because then every billion they're owning, they're still making a million dollars on each additional billion. And the idea of, that should a billionaire be getting more than a million on their next billion before every American has their next meal and a place to, to sleep with a roof over their head? And uh, it, it, I got to tell you this, it infuriates me a little bit, not that we honor veterans at ball games, but that the same country that stands up and applauds a veteran at a ball game won't let a veteran earn a living wage 
or have a guaranteed place to stay, or that veteran's brother, or that veteran's sister, or that veteran's son or parent isn't entitled to a roof over their head, universal health care, and never to go to bed hungry in this country or anywhere. Some random thoughts. All right. Who else? Look, it, like I said, now it's open question time. So uh, do you think America should have billionaires, Adam? You know, like I said, I hadn't... Uh, I haven't joined the whole abolish billionaires camp. I came up with the the compromise 99.9% .9 tax on every additional billion. So that's my position right now. Let's this let's have a discussion about it. I mean, I'd say let's open that up for further debate. Um, but that's where I'm at right now. Uh, the 99.9% .9 billionaires tax. Okay. I mean, and, I like and that was just another way to let JB know how pissed off I am. But all right, uh, let's uh, let's we got it's open forum for questions, so just uh, I have a question. Go right ahead, Janice. Um, I would like to ask Adam what he thinks of the Illinois legislators maps. They're on their third version, and they've quit for the year. I think uh, the Democratic Party is all right with being gerrymandered out of existence all over the country, as long as they're allowed to keep making ridiculous maps here in Illinois. <laughs> That's not an answer. <laughs> That's my observation. I mean, I mean, I don't know what, what else can I say about it? He's running um, okay, what, 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 what is your opinion of the map situation? Um, that uh, Adam Kinzinger, I'm not a Republican, but I don't want Adam, Adam Kinsinger to not run. And he's being uh, phased out by the maps. What about Marie Newman being tossed in with Sean Caston? Yeah, yeah. well, that's the Illinois gone Democratic now. Party at work. That's gone now. And she's in a camp, she's in a district now with Chi Garcia. Oh, well, still, you have the two progressives going after each other then. Right. Uh, only, right. Well, there can be only one. That's a good thing because there'll be a little bit of competition and they might just uh, get their views a little bit more aligned together. <laughs> Never mind. Charlie, okay, anybody else? Charlie, you're next. Go ahead. I'm and ask shaking my question. head at the whole party. Charlie, go ahead. Yes, Adam. Um, Unmute, Charlie. We can't hear you. I am. All right, I'm going to lower your hand, so go ahead and talk. Um, are there any transportation issues particular to the district regarding, let's say, commuter rail, paratransit, uh, Amtrak, what have you? Any issues particular to yeah. the residents of our bus service is like the deep south, practically non-existent. There are actually jobs up here that can't be uh, accessed. And even as a Vernon Township trustee, we had plans on the table to increase bus service, to do what we could as a township to increase bus service in our area. But then the pandemic hit and uh, we got, got sidetracked into, you know, emergency provisions for people who needed food and masks and things like that. But um, I've, I've, I've always been a big public trans transportation advocate, even, you know, before I had the self-interest of being a, a, a member of the ATU, local 1733, but and a bus driver, but people may, may look a little self-interest to be pushing a bus, bus transit, but I've always been for it and, and more light speed rail too. Adam, light rail. On, I, I speed light rail is what I meant to say. Are you on commuter rail line, I believe? Yeah, we have a metro, but you know, that's how it is. You know, we have our uh, century plus old elevated system in the city in our, our metro, and it's insufficient for. Do you have any bus reducing. feeder, feeder routes at all? We do. We have little specials. The, like I said, it's insufficient. Well, People. I, I'm sorry, Charlie, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I mean, that's an area where I could work with 
members of the other party who are for that. I, I, I know Daniel Didich, my state representative, is a real pro public trans. So something, an area where he and I would work together to improve and I've worked with him before. So despite our differing views, um, I'm sure we could work together to help this district with public trans. We've lost about four people so far. I'm... Yeah, that's, you know, not a good sign for me, but uh, we'll just keep forging ahead. Okay, I'm just saying, you know, we want to keep everything interesting. If one, if you were elected to Congress, like you want to be, what would be the one piece of legislation that you would like to see passed? Well, it would be a Green New Deal, comprehensive environmental legislation. Uh, and I am a member of the National Lawyers Guild Environmental Justice Committee. And we I will have a team of environmental lawyers working with me, developing policy points. And we will make sure that we're not only battling climate emergency, but that we're we're putting people to work with union jobs, creating, uh, you know, making sure the air and the water mm -hmm. are clean. All right, I have a question. Go ahead, Lana. Thank you. My question is, uh, uh, I don't know how to start because so many issues. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, if you will go to politics more deeper, like you said, how about like for free? <laughs> Education, college education free. So take it easy of the students to pay uh, tuition because it's like very, very difficult for students to pay tuition. And how about like free, more free medical care? Because, you know, people can use it, you know, people can't afford it to pay such a crazy insurance. How about that? Yeah, um, thank you for asking. Uh, I thank you. am thank a you former. For I was on the Bernie Sanders slate of delegates Yay, in 2020, Yay. and I support a lot of his policies, uh, free college, so how is, public how education. Is, how is going forward this, uh, you know, his pro, you know, proposal for the, you know, medical care free and uh, free I, education? How about that? I support universal health care free at the point right, of the right. Everybody yeah. in, nobody out, no co-pays, no premiums, no deductibles. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I'm from that... Russia. I'm from Russia, from former Soviet Union. At least a couple good stuff we had. <laughs> you know, we had free education completely and free medical care. Uh, uh, so the best university, it was like free and even it was paid scholarship. If, students really try very hard to study you know and it was not bad scholarship so at least a couple good stuff wasn't so <laughs> thank you you know even my uncle who was right. a very conservative mm -hmm. said me that too me too supported <laughs> well i mean but what you do with education is you're turning young people into taxpayers oh you're you're putting them. You you want that you want them to move into higher income brackets, mm -hmm. but um, we also live in a a prison state economy where oh. we have <clears throat> legalized slavery in the prisons, mm. and low skill, low wage workers are competing against free labor oh. in the prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some, and we have private prisons, and uh, there's just a lot of money being made. And it's just one of many examples where a handful of people stuffing their pockets is more important than the life and livelihood of the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, they pay off the politicians, and mm -hmm. uh, we get stuck fighting amongst ourselves on uh, social issues mm -hmm. like, like, bathrooms and such and you know everybody's going broke and uh but it's possible uh maybe in the everyone future. but the people the connected you know it works great for them i mean if you have the right job and you live in the right neighborhood your health care is going to be great but mm -hmm. um but that's it the health care is going to go where the money is and then for uh the rest of america and, and even 
parts of this affluent district. There are great swaths of this affluent district, and this is one of the most affluent districts in the country, but there's still great swaths of people who are barely getting by. And that's in what, and, and then in other districts, it just gets worse. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening to our Republic. And I, I think a lot of these people, they take that oath to uphold and defend the constitution and it means nothing to them. They only care about their status, the money in their pocket and the money they're feeding their benefactors. And um, it makes me sick. So uh, it's possible, actually, uh, it's possible for the future, take it easy of the education uh, paying and for the, yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about even, you know, the tax property, it's crazy uh, higher. The tax is, well, again, the tax system is unjust. We rely too much on property taxes. And not only that, in Illinois, Illinois is a microcosm mm -hmm. of the country. So therefore, we are despite our incredibly large economy, we're seemingly broke because yeah, but of the you answer, you and okay, the, but, the, the government cries poverty when it yeah, comes but to you didn't answer my question. Which I'm question? asking you, my question is a possibility, like in later, going to be easier. Of, of course, it's a possibility. More free, no, more free education and more free medical care. Yeah, people come together to demand it. Mm -hmm. If we get over these different these imaginary differences, like like red red team blue team, mm -hmm. and decide on uh, like that's what I mean when I say a more perfect union. I mean people need to come together. We have to be more accepting of our right. differences, right. and we have to understand the things we have in common and fight for those. Right, right. And and understand that we're being played for chumps by the Democrats and Republicans, the two major parties are part of this pro wrestling political mm -hmm. system we have, mm -hmm. and we are getting played. And uh, people, you know, people need to come together. Can it happen? I'm going to work for it to happen. And mm -hmm. it's up to the people to get a clue and up to me to try to provide that clue mm -hmm. so that we can do what we need to do to survive as a republic is uh, we're I don't like, you know, the road we're going down. It's, it's not pretty. Mm -hmm. Or this. Are you believe you believe in one more very quick? Are you believe in union? Are you believe in union? Are you believe in union? Do I believe in labor union. unions? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I believe in the rights of workers to organize. Yes, I'm a member of a, a, a amalgamated trans union, local seventeen thirty three. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be pointed out that a lot of labor leadership <laughs> is co opted. Mm -hmm. by the uh, Democratic Party, and they've sold out their rank and file. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for your answer. Thank you. Yeah. All right, who's got the next question? I don't see any hands. Hello. So. I'll go. Go ahead. Uh, so you mentioned, how he, Adam, you, mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned how the Democratic and the Republican parties have sold us out, and I agree with that, but my question is, should you win would you caucus with the Democrats or the Republicans? Wouldn't it be interesting to see you caucus with the Republicans? <laughs> when, when, when they're right, I'll stand with them, you know, and sometimes they are. Um, I, I as, a, as a former Democrat, I always like to think that my party, you know, my former party was more right than not. But this is an example of the lesser of two evils here, right here in Lake County. Um, we have, my wife's breast cancer was the kind that is related to ETO pollution. ETO is a carcinogen that is put into the air by corporate polluters. The Republicans, when they were in charge under the Trump administration and under Governor Rauner, the uh, National Environmental Protection Agency and the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency completely uh, ignored this pollution that was causing a cancer cluster that they found near Willowbrook. J.B. Pritzker took over. The Democrat, he closed down that corporate polluter in Willowbrook, but the corporate polluter up here by me, that is a Democratic donor, they're still open and now their competition's been knocked out. So uh, they're potentially making uh, more money and causing more pollution. And furthermore, <laughs> the Illinois General Assembly, the same wonderful people who made a resolution honoring my public service. They made uh, what they called the toughest environmental legislation against ETO pollution. It is completely meaningless. It's a joke. It's a farce. It, it is. It does not 
protect us. And they, you know, they declared mission accomplished, just like uh, George W. Bush, you know, Democrats did their mission accomplished banner. They weren't on an aircraft carrier, but, you know, they, they, it was a farce. And uh, this carcinogen is still gassing Lake County. And there you go. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Broad, uh, you will by any chance, uh, you will propose uh, in the future, because I really would like to hear, uh, if possible, like more clear answer. I uh, will propose really for more pushing for more pre-education uh, and for pre-medical care. Yes, yes and yes. I thought I was pretty clear about that. I'm sorry if I wasn't. I support free college, not just junior college. I support free access to public universities. Right, right. Yes, there you go. <laughs> and, and I also, we need to expand our education system mm -hmm. to educate people to be citizens in a mm -hmm. democracy so that we can own our government. It should be by the people for the people. Unfortunately, it is by the affluent mm -hmm. for the affluent. Um, go, go ahead. Like I said, uh, Bob Matter, why don't you come in and join us? We need a good Republican, some Republican questions in here. <laughs> this is getting a little bit uh, too boring. I don't want to bring the nuclear element in right now because I think we get the... Uh, and the fur flies. flies. I'm a hard no on nukes. Oh, really? Even about thorium-based molten salt? Yeah, never mind. Bob, you there? No, anyway. I'm going to skip to Joel if he's still here on that part. All right, Joel. If Joel, you're just, Joel you still here? Um, oh, yeah, I'm he's still there. You still there? I'm hey, still Joel, here. how are you doing? Joel, okay. calling a lifeline in on nuclear power. I'm I'm a I'm a strong supporter of nuclear power. Maybe not so much the uh, current based, uh, uh, the uh, not not so much the current based the uh, light water reactors, but uh, I'd like to get your your take on uh, what we call the thorium based molten salt reactor and possibly uh, fusion as a possible solution to climate change? My quick answer is um, it's not, it, it's, it could totally work on paper, but it's not going to work in reality. We have problems controlling leaks from oil fired boilers throughout the country. And I'm not trying to be facetious. I think oh, part I of the problem is, is the control um, and maintenance of these, of these facilities. So mm -hmm. the cost that it's going to take to make sure that there's no leaks or the like is just too high. What about the cost of storing the waste? For the cost of storing the waste is right. This and, and mind-boggling. You know, we just Adam and I, um, there's lawyers in the, the the lawyers guild. We just fought. They wanted to reduce um, the levels that they set for for nuclear waste going into waste you know waste fields and waste dumps. They wanted to lower it to a point where they didn't have to even report it to the local um, disposal agencies. Mm -hmm. So I just have a strong anti-nuke, you know, bias, I guess, that it's not, um, there's too many pr um, parameters that, that aren't, that, that are left out. Like the cost of storing waste okay. and the, the safety. Yeah. Soft um, target for terrorism, soft target for the climate disturbance, Fukushima. Fukushima, and also the, the 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 carbon the carbon imprint is there. I mean, I think there's also it's it's there's a there's a um, a minimization of the actual carbon cost, the carbon impact of of uh, of all nuke power. So um, I think it's just too risky. And and sorry, it's not a more scientific. What's wrong with solar? Why aren't we going all in on solar? Why? Why? Well, what about the storage and the intermittency of wind and solar? That's what I'm concerned about. We could produce surpluses. We could man. We could create new batteries. There's all kinds of things we can do. Um. Well, I'm. There's all. There's, there's I can there's think of all kinds of technology that have been in existence for years that we just completely ignore. There's ways to put sensors on the engines that turn the heat of the engine into more energy. There's a way to put sensors in the roads and sidewalks where the friction of vehicles rolling across. But then, it's, but then you got these, you know, politically connected uh, special people who handle the roads that uh, no one wants to mess around with those guys. And you know, but we could, you know, they do the roads their particular way. But there's new ways we could build roads to make them uh, energy 
creators. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, so, that, so that all this road building actually becomes a surplus for us instead of, and by the way, cars rolling on the roads in America, that's pretty constant. So, uh, you know, that's a way to have a certain level of, of, of energy going. Right there. I mean, it's, it's, I know it sounds sci-fi, but I know the technology's out there, and I'm just a bus driver. So why aren't any of these? That just tells you what a what a what a clownish situation we have in DC. Right, with but Adam, if I could ask you a question, what is there a few different generating you know um, power companies in the district? What is the is there? What's the well, you know part of uh, you know what happened with our our speaker our Democratic speaker, our former head of the Democratic Party, was that he was involved in this plan that was, uh, you know, letting ComEd, the utility company, fleece the, ta the, the citizens of this state in order, you know, so they can get kickbacks. Danny's taking off. Thanks for showing up, brother. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, let's keep at it. I don't know. I don't know. You know, beyond that, I mean, ComEd... And uh, there are a lot of these new little companies. I don't know how many of them are middlemen for, for who or what. You know, it's like the sign companies for the politics. You know, like all roads lead to the one plant in the city. But, but you know. I, I well, think, I, I just want to say, but I think politically, it's, it's all of us on this page could agree that there's bad guys out there, whatever. And I think it's and going forward, it's like you have to project something that's, you know, that could work, you know, that, that's working. And then um, I think one of the things you also want to say is that consumption, we know all these studies in New York show that consumption can be decreased, even if it's 5%, 10%, not telling people, you know, that there's definitely waste, but you also don't want, you don't want to be that negative, you know, yeah. uh, 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 trying to eat as consumption. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Charlie, are you done or Joel? Thank you, yeah. Joel. Now I was actually, I was really in, Hanging on what Joel had to say, it was very important to me. All right, Charlie had his hand up, so go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, I'm in an organization uh, which actually comes out of a lot of the Greens of Illinois called Eco Socialism, mm. and they have something called a Solidarity Economy. Are you familiar with this? Uh, and are you for uh, combining socialism and? ecology as into changing our economy altogether top to bottom i do consider myself an eco-socialist and uh, i think i know i i know i would be attacked for that or you even if i even if i wasn't an eco-socialist you know my I'd be guilty by association anyway, but I, but I am an eco-socialist and I, th I think the way to explain this to people who aren't socialists is uh, it's like the healthcare system. Do we want the resources to actually go for the remedy to climate emergency, or do we want to stuff the pockets of CEOs and shareholders like we do with our healthcare system? You know, this is the whole uh, corporate green new deal thing. And, and that's also part of uh the, the nuclear scam is that we're, we're spending all this money on middlemen shuffling things around and not the remedy. So uh, eco-socialism, uh, the worker own, you know, worker co-ops, or at least having the money going to labor, not people who aren't doing the work, not people who are politically connected and uh, just passing around money to each other. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm an eco socialist, and um, we, and I think it, it, it's something it, during the great during the Great Depression, people who weren't socialists bought into uh, some socialist ideas that were helpful, like public utilities needs to make a comeback, and uh, I think this is is a survival mechanism. Otherwise, we're looking at another boondoggle. Okay. I'm sorry, that wasn't the best answer, but it wasn't my worst well, one. Either. It wasn't my worst one either, though. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're, 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 uh, you like that stuff. <laughs> huh? You want to, you want to nationalize 
uh, industries, right? Not listening to China. No, I wouldn't say that. I would, um, unless you, you know. We do want we do want some decentralization here, right? I mean, uh, we, well, want, the we want the money. We want the money going into the communities and the people doing the work, not the managers, not the paper pushers, not someone sitting behind a desk. Well, let me put it this way: Do you think all power generation? Needed by the people, the district should be provided by public employees. Um, I don't know. Well, um, I'd like to know a little bit more about uh, what you think. I, I mean, I, I just don't, you know, you, you, you haven't really gotten into the specifics of what you would like to do on No, I would like to actually, good time to point out that we're going to have a separate uh, meeting just to deal with the environmental stuff. Um, I'm not going to, I don't want to just get lost in the weeds here, especially when I don't even have all my policy points worked out yet. You're, you know, you're asking some really tough, specific questions. I haven't even met with the team that I'm putting together. You know, we're putting together a team of environmental lawyers. We're going to be talking about this stuff and we're going to be having town halls and talking to people about what they All think. All right. Then here's another question. You indicate that the Democrats or, or the unions have uh, co opted. Some, the, some. The, it's the, not the a Democrats black and white Democrats, issue. It's right? not a black and white issue. But. The president of the United States has a 100% voting record and the vice president, though she wasn't in uh, the Congress that long. Yeah, that's about to get Both blown. of them have 100% voting records for the AFL-CIO. There you now, go. As an and yet. I, as an, in the AFL-CIO, what reason would I have for not supporting the Democratic Party. Let me put it that way. Now, very go good. Green. Good question. I've got a good answer for you. If you're not supporting Medicare for all, you're not pro-labor. I'm going to tell you, I've been on the picket lines for three different strikes. The, the bosses try to shut down each one by yanking health care. You, you, our health care system is for keeping workers on the plantation. It has taken away the right to strike. Now, Nabisco was able to win their strike despite getting Wait, their health care oh, yanked. Hold on. Hold on. I'm answering the question here about this because this is an important point about Joe Biden, the guy that was sitting on the stage or the standing on the stage in the first Democratic debate ranting there will be a deductible. He's He's got a good right. AFL gives him that 100%. How can he be 100%? for labor when you're undermining the right of labor to strike and when you're undermining the right of a worker to walk off the job and get at their own get a different job or start their own business because they're tied to the they're tied by the strings to from their health care plan sounds like slavery you know right like you know and it does doesn't it it is a plantation there is plantation politics in terrible. the system terrible. very big part of it Terrible. And the fact that, oh, like, that someone, it's not, the fact that someone that is so regressive right, should right. get a one hundred percent rating from a major labor organization shows you how regressive this country has become. Mm -hmm. We have a system of government right now dominated by two parties. One is a far right wing party, and the other is a conservative party. There is no left. Adam, follow up question. Um. We've debated healthcare many times at the college. As a matter of fact, when we started out, five million people in the United States many years ago, we had a speaker who didn't have any form of health health insurance. Then it grew and grew to 50 million. And last I looked at somewhere between 50 and 100 million people had no provision uh, for health insurance. However, and this is people through negotiating union contracts, such as I do, 
have always had provision for some measure of health insurance. So I don't particularly understand, sir, how Medicare for all is beneficial to someone who already has health insurance. Now, it can be taken away. And has understandably, been. But and workers tried to every strike. place the unions have been maintaining this as a standard benefit yeah. as a condition of employment. And if they had that health care as just a human right through their country, then those extra, those hard negotiations for health care could be extra salary and extra benefits instead of squabbling to get into a system where once you get real sick, you, you, you're going to be, you're going to be off your job. You're going to get, if you're catastrophically ill, you, what happens? You use up all your benefits, you lose your job, and then you get kicked into the public system anyway. After you're broke, it's a system that bankrupts and kills Americans, what we have. The fact that the union people get co-opted precisely because they get a, they negotiate this uh, slightly better deal, which only separates them from the rest of the working class. You know, basically opens the door for the scabs that are going to take their jobs. <laughs> the, the rest of us who are so who are broke and struggling, twenty percent of the people under the poverty rate online are there because of out-of-pocket medical expenses. And I, I don't know, you don't have to look too hard to see people who have worked hard their whole life, maybe even made a good living, who end up losing everything when they get sick, end of life care. It's a giant scam. And again, the money is not going for health care. It's going for CEO and shareholder profits. You give a CEO a $90 million bonus? Why is that? For denying coverage to the people who pay into the system. They get rewarded. They are incentivized in the current system to deny care. They spend their time writing sick people through a bureaucracy, a corporate technocratic bureaucracy, mm -hmm. where they have to jump through hoops and often end up dead because their tests and their care get delayed or obstructed by this maze. Mm -hmm. The Democratic Party calls itself pro-choice, but, you know, you don't get the, you know, the, the insurance companies are picking for you and your employer is picking your insurance. There's not a lot of choice or freedom there. And the Republicans call themselves pro-life, but out of all the wealthy countries, this is the only one of the top 19 wealthy countries where the birth mother and infant mortality rate are going up because of this inhumane, insane corporate health care system. It's not like anything else. And by the way, Medicare for all, it's got problems. The Canadian system has problems. It's not. It's one of the worst universal health care systems. It's just a lot better than what we have. And our system, screwed up as it is, is just kind of built so that it could transition more easily into a Canadian-style system. It just be an easier transition for us. Then there may be ways to do something better than that, and I'm all up for discussing that. But nothing that keeps this, this system that puts profits over health and life. Because healthcare, I mean, to me, it's common defense. And it's like whether you're a liberal or a conservative or whatever your political persuasion, you're, you're probably going to get sick at some point. You're probably going to get old and sick at some point. Some of us, we're healthy our whole life and then bing, boom, we just drop dead. But a lot of us have a time of getting ill or sick at some point and we need a healthcare system that takes care of us. Darren's going to take off. Thanks for coming, Richardson. Can I ask a question? Sure, I might defer this next one to my, my wife, who's an excellent doctor and knows more about this stuff than I do. If it's a healthcare question, go on. Go on to who? No, I will ask your question. I was just saying- Oh, okay. My, my question is about war. 
um, the military probably uses more fossil fuels than any other entity in the world. And we give, what is it, 57% of our national budget to the war industry that goes into the pockets of uh, defense industry people. Yeah, I mean, that is uh, another major reason I joined the Green Party. You know, they, uh, Anna, who was one of the people that recruited me, she uh, likes to call the Democratic Party the War Party. Um, I'm really embarrassed about um, the revelations in the Afghanistan papers. I, I mean, uh, I'm just amazed. You know, my congressman, when we talked about Medicare for All, he would say, uh, how are we going to pay for it? I, I'm wondering what questions he asked about the money we were spending in Afghanistan for 20 years to build the Afghan army. And that was like way more attention to Biden's quick withdrawal, which was the good part of that farce. You know, the getting out was the good part compared to 20 years of a complete farce, all that death, all that money, all that destabilization for, for nothing. It was absolutely nothing. And I'm the son of a Vietnam veteran, and uh, I, I was motivated to get into politics to try to stop another Vietnam. And as a in my life in politics, I've seen the Democratic Party sign off on a war in Iraq, and I myself signed off on getting into Afghanistan. I believe the rationale. I, I campaigned for Barack Obama, and uh, you know, and and then of course with our healthcare system is like a 9/11 every month before the pandemic. So um, that's three Vietnams right there. That uh, and I'm just trying to end this cycle of senseless death and waste. And uh, yeah, anything I can do to end the, you know, the the forever wars and. Um, kind of disgusted, you know, the progressives that I was with, I was used to be with our revolution. And we were really celebrating Robin Kelly becoming chair of the Democratic Party. And yeah, now that she's chair of the Democratic Party, she flipped her vote on cutting the defense budget. She signed off on the, uh, she'd voted against, uh, she voted for cutting last time. Now she's chair of the Illinois Party and she's for it. And Brad skipped out on the vote. You know, there's a gutsy move, Brad. But uh, yeah. I would be definitely for cutting military budget. And to tell me you can't find 10% of waste in the defense budget. How about starting with not giving them the weapons they don't want or don't ask for? We we gave more than the military asked for because the contractors want it. All tell right. me again about um, uh, uh, the right, third Ken. district, uh, uh, Robin Kelly, and what she just vote, uh, she what voted. She voted. She, uh, she didn't. She voted against the cut. There was a vote for ten percent cut, and she, she had voted oh. for the cut last time. She flip flop. Right. Thank you. We so have a question. Doing, that was a that she that was a progressive victory. Supposedly, was Robin Kelly becoming the new chair of the Democratic Party in Illinois? Okay. Our next question is going to be the guy who's that guy in the iPhone? Please unmute and ask your question. You've had your hand up for quite a while. Uh, I am unmuted. Thank you. Uh, my name is Wayne. Um, I want to say that, you know, we have learned, I think, I hope, in the last few years that um, without health care for all, we don't really have health care for anyone. We don't have adequate health care for anyone until we have adequate health care for everyone. And um, Adam mentioned that the Canadian system, which is far from perfect, uh, is much better than ours. Like Michael Moore, I have relatives in Canada, and I know how happy they are when they think about our health care. They're not happy with 100% with theirs, but they are much happier than we are with ours. And I have, until I moved to Illinois, I have always lived very close to Canada and I'm aware of their system. Um, and uh, it, it is much, much better than ours. I also have relatives and friends in Finland where their system is much better than Canada's and they are thrilled and delighted. But, you know, we have to have health care for all or we have public health for no one. Also, all of these issues, as I think we all know here, are all tied to environmental issues. So, uh, you know, it's all part of one big problem and one bad system. 
I also want to, uh, before I tune out here, and I am at work, I may have missed a few things that have already been touched on, but um, I would like to speak not only for free advanced education, I would like to speak for people being paid for higher education, people being paid for attending colleges and advanced education in many fields. Because without that, it doesn't matter whether the costs are low or the interest is zero, they can't afford it anyway. So they need to be paid to attend college and we all benefit from everybody being better educated and thank you all for listening. Okay, um, anything else from anybody else here real quick? It's still, we got plenty of time for questions still. Um, I, I just, Adam, um, can you I would just like to uh, say something about, about what Wayne brought up uh, real quick. Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Because they have something in Germany, you know, like that, that would come in handy here. You know, the, here we, it's the military or bust, right? You join the military, you serve, you get to go to school. You know, we, we should have other ways to serve. I mean, there are many things that need to be done and we should have a, we should have social, like, like they do in Germany, a, a social service plan. Not everyone's cut out for the military and there's, there's other ways that you can serve your country other than fighting in forever wars where you could, you know, earn scholarships or whatever. But I'm also in a free college and I'm for, I'm for stipends or work opportunities. Scholarships or work opportunities. When I was, went to school, I worked for the school paper. I was paid, you know, I was uh, so good opportunities for students to earn or more opportunities for them. Pell Grant, you know, we had Pell Grants. So, I mean, there should be, you know, maybe cash stipends for low income people. That's not a radical idea. That was, used to be normal until we decided that feeding the banks was more important than low income kids getting a higher education. Okay, um, I, I just would, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of problems here and I've heard a lot of things, but I'm still not hearing the solutions that are going, you know, what specific pieces of legislation you would have, what types of um, infrastructure you'd wanna do. I mean, it's just mass transit, free healthcare. How are you gonna do that? What's the political ramifications, you know, like, um, and I can give you a solution. You know, I honestly believe that uh, the thorium molten salt reactors are going to be a way to go. And I know that uh, if you manufacture them in shipyards, you can make them the size of a shipping container, thereabouts, bury them underground, bullshit. so on and so forth. <laughs> Charlie, shut the hell up. I'm just saying, you know, there Nuclear are reactors. Here, How big is it? Size of a shipping container. And if you don't believe me, I'd like you to, to put you in touch with a guy who's doing it right now in Italy, <laughs> and I'm sorry, in, in Europe. I talked to him at the last story of Energy Alliance. Yeah. He's very close. I've, Why don't you buy I've, one? Buy one yourself. I've never won. I've never once in all my political life been to uh, a candidate's first meeting where they went diving into the weeds well, on, the, 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 policy. Uh, I mean, I think I've given a number of policy points here. I, I know, know you're sore. I know you're sore about my hard anti-nuke stance. On no, it's I not that. I just, you know, it's just like when, um, you know, I've gone to various candidate meetings before. You know, like for example, um, I would say I'm for this, but you know, isn't there like, like for example, a fundamental question would be, what would be the first piece of legislation you recommend? Now you said it's healthcare. You said it's this. You said it's that. Uh, I never said what my first piece would be, and I okay. and I don't have that. I don't have that worked out. We, we're just we're just making the move today mm -hmm. to announce that we're forming a committee. So we're really at the earliest stages of the campaign. We're actually today is the first day I'm becoming a campaign, and uh, right now the campaign is me. And the fact that I have some people who've said they will back me, I've named who those backers are of the National Lawyers Guild Environmental Justice Committee is going to provide some support, the West Suburban DSA, and uh, the Cook County Green Party has recognized my candidacy. So that's, uh, yeah, Green New Deal, I said Green New Deal first. Uh, that is like, probably first in my heart, Lisa, you said in chat. Um, I don't know that we could, you know, in reality, you know, what can be done first might go, you know, first, but I think the environment 
needs to be a priority because we're in a climate emergency. So it it's, seems like it's always an afterthought. And on that note, I see that the Lorax has joined us. Huh. I, I see Lee, Lee Diamond. What do you have to say about nuclear power, sir? Talking to you, Lee. Yeah, I need to reopen the. The you know I I I'll, full disclosure full disclosure I I may have hinted to Lee that I would have a position for him on my in, in my if I were elected that Lee might be someone on my team so I, full disclosure I only just came in I, I I'm not uh, I'm a. Uh, He's not taking it too seriously, obviously. He's like, I'm a clean wondering. energy activist. I'm a clean energy activist. And um, the Lorax. I've been neutral on nuclear power because um, I think that um, the environmental community uh, was not at fault, but in the big picture, you know, obviously the status quo is at fault, but the environmental community failed to educate the public, you know, about climate change, they fail to prioritize. And now they're too busy, you know, with planting their own flag, instead of fighting the good fight. So I'm, I'm neutral on, on until I learn enough to know that we can actually replace fossil fuels I'm neutral on nuclear power. I'm not going to be against it, because we might, it's possible we're going to need I'll it. I'll be against it enough for both of us, Lee. How about that? I mean, I just don't think that I can, I can make an argument that, um, that we can cover it with, um, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, with, with, with renewables. With renewables. Yeah. But I mean, with energy that is not constant. Um, and mm -hmm. if we do overcome the battery challenge, that'll be a different picture. But yeah. the other thing that we have to do, and we have to argue to mainstream society is that economic growth is not a smart concept. Um, we need managed growth because we live on a finite planet and that includes the lithium. I mean, people aren't gonna like it, but we're gonna have to mine lithium. Yeah. What, else can we, what else can we do? <laughs> so, you know, um, we have to look at all these things honestly. Um, not to and mention I'm not a fan of nuclear power, but you know, I, 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 I don't think that we can. Let me know when we clean up Fukushima, then talk to me about it. Well, that's true. I mean, I don't disagree with you. And I don't like the idea of, um, of radiation that, pouring into our ocean. Countries that don't have accountability building nuclear power plants. And that's a good reason for the United States to, to say that GE and other companies, you can't go abroad unless you have the regulations in place to. Um, manage it in an accountable way, regardless of what your 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 client in China or wherever does. We want to make sure that you're running, you know, uh, 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 an environmentally sustainable operation. So we'd like to make one point about that. We um, we could have an honest disagreement about nuclear power, but people who are paid off can't have an honest disagreement because they're paid shills right. and as long as we're we have a government filled with a bunch of paid hacks and not to say every elected public servant is a paid hack because i know a lot of good people in public service who get into public service for the in both parties i've met honorable people who will stand up for their principles uh, against their party bosses against even popular will because of their conscience and uh i respect that but we need to start electing people, whether it's a Green, a Dem, or a Republican, that's not taking money from these bad actors. There are smart so, people. I mean, you know, so there's some, you know, there may be some smart people that sincerely believe in nuclear power as an option for some of the interesting reasons that have been presented here about the the inconstant nature of the re of clean renewables. But but we got it. We got to get rid of the. We got to have the honest debate first of all and, and what yeah, well i didn't even know that i wasn't focused on this but it just came to my attention this week that the oil industry is pushing nukes and you know that's a good example of what you're talking about and i agree with you on that um you speaking of bad actors yeah 
I agree. Well, they haven't started killing activists in this country yet, but they've killed activists in other countries. Oh, well, yeah, and and which makes them murderers as well like as your, one of your senators was one of your senators got got herself ensnared in that uh situation. So Are you yeah. talking about our former are you talking about Carol way back when? Yeah. 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 It might have been a mistake, but you know. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know. I don't know. But but well, that guy was... bad, I know we had uh I've seen one president uh bowing right to the king of Saudi Arabia. I saw another one holding hands with him. Uh he they murdered a, a an American journalist, you know. Are you talking about Obama bowing? Yeah, he did. Yes. Yeah. Bowed. Well. And uh and then uh, you know, W hand in hand, Trump with the the globe weird yeah well i'm sure everybody on this call. thing but no the point the point is um where, where's biden on rectifying what happened to a journalist killed uh, by the house of sod um okay, when, so, so when, 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 the, when this when the national guard in nicaragua executed a, a network news right. anchor on tv jimmy carter he pulled the plug on them and uh, actually ended up collapsing their whole rotten regime down there in Nicaragua. So I'm just kind of curious. Um, that's what, not correct. What was that? That was much earlier. Um, you know, they, they remained in power after Carter. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, it, you know, it, it was the beginning of the end. They, you, they lost U.S. support up until Reagan, you know, started supporting the retreads. Pretty sure my timeline oh. on that. Well, you know, you're going to start arguing now. No, 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 just kind of, just kind of curious because I heard that the Biden administration is mucking around in Nicaragua again, which oh. kind of gives them a nice little Reagan yeah. Reagan esque tinge, and that uh, yeah. he's they have done nothing in response. I mean, we all knew Trump wasn't going to do anything about it, but what what's Biden done about that? Is that he's been in? You know, is that well, we're taking, we're taking is it okay to kill? Is it okay to kill U.S. journalists? Ortega is a fascist, but you know, whatever. Who is Ortega? Ortega? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, they're fascist, though. I don't think he's anybody's fascist, Adam. Um, okay, I'm. I'm not. I'm, I wasn't trying to say that. Um, I'm a Sandinista, and I'm running on the Sandinista ticket. <laughs> no, I mean, look, you know, I love Adam. I'm just, I'm just saying I love, that I, I love Adam, but. Um, you but know. you're just here to trip me up just for kicks. Huh? No, I think that the, the United States has this thing with energy. It goes back to Franklin Roosevelt. So he he yeah. cuddled up with with uh, what's his face. We and, have we have this thing with banana wars. It goes back to the beginning of the 20th century. And uh, apparently, well, I think that you know that. Okay, so that I just got my opinion. That is not sufficient to say it's in our national interest okay so to what i was just saying I mean, maybe that was, we, it don't, was we, don't, we had no right to go fuck over those people so that we could get those bananas that's bullshit um thank you the oil is a tougher argument to make and you know today we should be getting off oil and so that is our way out of the middle east to get off the fucking oil you know so we don't have to play around with it. Didn't Trump have us for energy independence when we were in his well, administration? Exactly. And Obama made a huge mistake when he said all of the above. That was a terrible thing he did. And that's my biggest disagreement with him. Um, that was awful. And I was out there with Bill McKibben in 2011. It was the coldest day in the last 15 years in, in Washington, D.C. You know, and I stood there for 10 hours. Um, so protesting the Keystone Pipeline. Um, so you were you were you were uh, saying that the Keystone Pipeline was a bad thing then? It's still a bad thing. And I'm glad that Biden canceled it. But um, he did slash quite a few million, quite a few jobs by slashing. It's it not down. that many jobs that that's uh, that's it that's was a, safer than by safer than by what Charlie says is oil tankers. It's 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 hot air being blown by the by by industry. Um, they sure do a lot no, the of the tankers. Out. The tankers are not acceptable either. But um, so what the are we pipeline, doing, 
the, pi the pipeline has caused massive pollution in Michigan and other places. So um, it's it's all about the profits for, I'll be right back. for Canadian um, industry and for uh, the Koch brothers. So, you know, mm -hmm. Adam's going to let me take over while he goes to the bathroom. Uh, that, that's fine. I, I have to apologize, Janice. Thank you for the uh, um, the the reminder about my language. I appreciate that. Okay. And if you want to mute, I do apologize. Okay. Um, my uh, so anyway, let's get back. So you uh, you're you're you if nuclear may be a part of your um, climate change philosophy. Um, if it's necessary to keep us going uh, with electric cars and all that stuff, plus the lithium and everything else, you're not opposed. If we to could do a lot right now just with conservation mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like the, tax credits. The Amy, for, Amory for Lovins and the new buildings and all that stuff. Well, that stuff's already happening. I mean, green lead is a standard. It's a national standard. All we have to do is follow it. You know, all we have to do is, you know, weather strip yeah. homes and 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 all that stuff i mean there's vast parts of this country that'll create way more jobs than what you know is going to come from um you know what you're talking about with oil pipelines but you know it doesn't make as much profits for the for the energy industry the people that want to sell the fuel but if we want to create jobs and spread disposable income for more people, let's weather strip every house in the country and, and build the factories to produce those needed products and put solar panels on people's houses. Everywhere. That's gonna make the middle class. That's the, that's the beauty of the green economy is that we can revitalize the middle class. You know, that's where biotech, biotech and the green economy, that's where the jobs are. You know, in home health care aids and stuff like that, as I see my friend, the lovely, stunning Dr. Peck. Yes, the gorgeous. Agree with me. Hey, Lee, you got flagged for naughty language. So for everyone that had me swearing in this forum before Lee, you, you lost your bet. Well, the thing, the thing is, is, um, you know, sometimes I get a little bit uh, out, of, out of control sometimes. So... <laughs> I'll apologize in advance. Oh, I appreciate your passion on the issue. And I and I I, I sense it's an honest, thought out position, not that you're mm -hmm. taking money to to try to manipulate me. That, that you know, so I, I'm I mean I'm respecting the difference, you know, here and okay. I uh, and I and I I'm glad that you're engaged and that you care because we have you a put lot that gray to right there. Did you put that gray right there just for him to to, to show him that you were working hard, you got the gray right. Oh. He's talking about your hair. The racing stripe. Yeah, it's just the way yeah, it works. Is that? Is it's that, supposed to all be gray. gray. It should all be. Gray. Gray. I don't know why it's not all gray. It should all be gray. Right center of the room. Not. It should all, right. all be gray. It's not. Charlie. Right. Charlie has another question. He has his hands raised. So go ahead, Charlie. Yes, Adam. Um, I heard your friend Lee say a couple times, "We have to get off oil." And I realize you may not be a deciding official, but are any buses in the fleet that you drive 14 hours a day clean buses? No, not yet. But that would be uh, part of the Green New Deal, I think, would be getting those clean buses out there. I know that they're in what, you know, I know they're working on them here in Illinois battery but and honest people say there's a problem with those too but um we need to be committed to developing the technology if we could be as committed to that as we were to building the atomic bomb in world war ii you know we, we need the we need, we need to understand that we are in a climate emergency and that we need to go all in on the remedy and it's not going to be uh tax credits for people to get solar and do like ad hoc a little piece of solar here, a little piece of solar there. We need, you know, it may not be the only answer, but we need to go as hard as we can on solar. I mean, that I am pretty hardcore about. I'm pretty f firmly uh, a true believer in going as, as much solar as we can everywhere we can 
Uh, and I yeah. have a three phase plan. All right, Charlie. Do you, do you uh, follow up, sir? Uh, do you believe that there's such a thing as miniature nuclear reactors, which could be put all around the district and meet your own energy needs? I'm the wrong person to talk People to. You're looking for a nuclear solution. People are promoting that as technology that 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 they're safer and stuff like that. But I haven't researched it. I don't know anything about it. Oh, I saw Car Carla was here. I didn't even see Carla was here. Mm -hmm. She was saying so goodbye. small Bye. reactors that you could put all over the district. We're well, we're still losing around. a lot of people on this thing. It's uh, but that's okay. We're we'll probably get more coming in again. Um, this is weird. People are just popping in at odd times. Well, the thing is, is that you know, it's 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 it, a lot of our regulars are not here tonight. So you know, Mike, did you have anything you want to add or say real quick to ask the candidate? Uh, whoa! I just unmuted myself. Yeah, not really. I'm I'm, I'm finding the conversation very very interesting. Uh, but um, uh, uh, the the gentleman who uh, said that uh, the pipeline job loss was not that great, that not that many jobs were lost. Um, uh, were there a lot of job loss with uh, Biden's uh, decision? Uh, and how does he know that uh, the job loss was not that significant? Looks like it's you, Lee. 55 jobs. Yeah, it's been oversold repeatedly it's it's, it's what, jobs. just like, it's like well, i don't know how many jobs it is but it's what adam's yes they've about. looked into it i mean people like us the labor people the pipe pipeline guys people and like us don't have everybody time. said there was about 55 around 50 jobs people like us don't have the time the way the real estate industry or all these professional lobbyists do to go and do this crap eight hours a day that's what they do for their whole lives and they make up all this bull, bull. It's, you know, it's just complete bull. There's the jobs. Like the stuff about are, the Canadian healthcare system. The the overplayed, overwrought horror stories about the Canadian healthcare system. Yeah, well, and I can't really speak to that, but people can I look can't. up. Go on. People can look up T.R. Reid, who used to be a reporter for the Washington Post, and he took the time to do a, a comprehensive um, comparative study of different country's healthcare systems. And, and I think probably, I don't know if Amon Poor and Company or Terry Gross or somebody has talked to him and interviewed him about his books and stuff. And that, that was a few books ago, but, but anyway, um, you know, we, it takes a lot of work to, 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 um, you know, make the weather stripping and the insulation and the, and the solar panels and the uh, wind turbines those are physical things and then go install them. And then it's gonna take technicians to maintain the turbines. Um, the, the pipelines, once they're built, I mean, they're a huge capital investment. It's not, there aren't, you know, that many jobs. And plus there's all the pollution that, you know, that comes with this. So, um, you know, don't, do your own research. Don't quote what comes from somebody who, you know, is committed to some, you know, junk that comes out of the ground and is, you know, basically destroying our planet. You know, thank you for amplifying my earlier point about the paid hypes that are out there. Um, I would like to make a point about single pair, though real quick and I'll invite Dr. Lisa Peck to comment too. I bought the Democratic Party line for a long time. I was not a healthcare activist. And when I campaigned for Barack Obama, the public option made a lot of sense to me because I hadn't really done a deep dive into healthcare policy. And I, I didn't get into politics to uh, get into the minutia of of healthcare reform. And I didn't ever see myself as being an elected official. So I didn't see any reason why I needed to. But um, 
And of course, I was a democratic socialist and the DSA and Bernie Sanders had long been promoting uh, Medicare for all. But, you know, that's the left and no one listens to them. And I didn't think it was very realistic. And I thought I was being practical supporting uh, something like a public option. But it was when I got involved with uh, Lisa and when my good friend Robert Herzog became a physician's assistant, and when I began to be uh, paying more attention to National Nurses United and what the nurses were saying, and, and a number of nurses that I knew, it was like from the healthcare professionals in my life that really started educating me and teaching me, like, you know, that we're all being sold a bunch of nonsense. And furthermore, I was in the limo business for a long time. And for, for whatever reason, I always ask Canadian business people, would you take our system over years? And it was like a, a straw poll I conducted for over 20 years. And these were people from the business community, not like the socialist activists from Canada. These were business people. And uh, the business people always said, you know, oh, well, it's got problems. It's not perfect. But oh, but our system's way better than yours. And these were, it was 100%. 100% over 20 years. The two things I always ask people, if they were married a long time, I always ask them what their secret was. And if they were from Canada, I asked them about their healthcare system. So my straw poll gave me that and uh, my healthcare professionals in my life gave me that. And also there's a documentary called Fix It. And it has a lot of business people from Canada talking about why they like the single health payer system over what we have. And so if you haven't seen it, check it out. And, uh, and now if Lisa would like to add on. I know she didn't want to talk much, but... Uh, Lisa, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. You know, the one thing I wanted to say, because some, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember who, but somebody brought up um, union, you know, the union health insurance and how good it's been. And, and that's true. It's great. I actually used to... When we had a private practice, we used to have union health insurance part of the chemical workers and our deductible was like $500 and then the out of pocket was a couple thousand and that was it. But most people, what they're paying for insurance and is ridiculous. I mean, I have people who are paying 12, a married couple paying $1,200 a month just for their premiums. And then their out of pocket is like that. And then they're paying deductibles of like $10,000 and then another 15,000 for out of pocket expenses, which comes out to a lot of money. Even if you, especially if you're like a family of four making where your income is under a hundred thousand a year, or 50,000 a year, it's, and you get sick, it's unaffordable. So, you know, when I, and I've had people in the unions talk to me about healthcare and that's what I say to them that you know you you still have good health care but you're not going to pay as much and that's my my fight for single payer and also because i spend way too much time dealing with insurance companies calling me and saying well we're not going to cover this we're not going to cover that we're not covering that medication because it's too expensive let's find a different medication and instead of wasting my time I'm um, spending my time with patients. I'm wasting my time with pharmacy, with the insurance companies and pharmacies. And it's just really, you know, it's, I've been in practice for 28 years and it, mm -hmm. it's just been detrimental to people. And even for myself, you know, I mean, I thank God I'm, and Adam alluded to my breast cancer a couple of years ago. And, you know, I thank God I'm here and, you know, I had very good health care, but and I was fortunately able to afford it, but it still took a chunk out of our income too, you know, and I've got yeah, so um that's uh, that's about all I have to say <laughs> um about single payer health care. So I really support it. I think that when I look at the cost of health care, it's all like Adam was saying, it's all administrative. Medicare costs a lot less to administrate than private insurance. And a lot of our healthcare dollars are going to pay um, CEOs and, and shareholders. And it's just, uh, it's just not right. You're putting profits over people and that's just wrong.
I have a question, uh, Lisa. Um, as you, uh, you, you well know, but other people might not, the Medicare for All plan involved not just universalizing Medicare in its current form, but improving it. Now, since the uh, Biden took office, explain to everybody how it's been made worse how, rather than improving it. How healthcare has been made How Medicare itself, the dynamic, people I'm giving the brass tax on Medicare and what the changes since the Biden administration. Um, I don't know that anything's changed that much since the Biden administration. No, we were talking about that before. Oh yeah, I was just throwing you a, a lob there. I, well, mainly trying to, they're working to ins further insulate the insurance industry. Oh, well, absolutely. Yes. And uh, they oh. anticipating the, 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 the eventual transformation, you know, that it will be inevitable that people simply won't be able to, you know, they're going to kill the golden goose, the U.S. economy. Can I speak on this? Yeah, go ahead, Charlie. Their seniors have until December the 7th to renew their Medicare. If you watch the regular media, there's competition among various insurance agencies, providers, to offer supplemental insurance. And they are all offering phone numbers you can call and you can obviously their thing is to sell you insurance to make up the gap. There's been significant changes. There's things where you have to apply and there's increases of something like the, I believe it's based on um, uh, residency in, in high cost areas. We had it in the feds, um, differential um, that you are eligible for dependent upon your zip code. Uh, you can choose different plans. I have not called and found out any more than that, but there is nothing but solid commercials all day long to get seniors to call in. Humana and the other big providers are looking to get a piece of the action. But all the seniors have until December the 7th to re register um, their Medicare coverage. And there's various plans, A, B, C, and so forth. That's all I'll add. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh, and yeah. I guess who pays for those ubiquitous, well produced commercials? We do. And you see them on TV all the time. They're, the production <laughs> standards are impeccable. They're very well written. They're very well produced. They're on constantly. And it's also partly why the, the networks aren't ever going to uh, be on our side because they don't want to lose that sweet, sweet cash. You know, Sam Elliott, folksy commercials for Blue Cross Blue Shield, they can only guess how much of our money goes to that. But it's uh, only a fraction of what they make off us. Tim, what is, if we're all finished, why don't you explain rebuttals and... Our next uh, transition. All right. Um, if you, if with our next part is going to be our rebuttal period, um, and it's only about seven forty-three. But each and everybody who wants to speak will get up to five minutes to say their piece, and then Adam, you'll get a chance to uh, be the last speaker. So uh, I know Charlie usually goes. Who else would like to make a rebuttal tonight? I'll write down the order here. And, uh, you know, so if you guys want to uh, hang on, let me get a blank piece of paper here real quick so I can. Well, let's thank our speaker. All right. Well, who would like to rebut tonight then? Given a chance to get five minutes or seven minutes, whatever. Uh, Adam, I know you'll get the last word. Charlie, I know you want to go. Okay. Who else would like to go? Lee, it'd be a good time to put your point of view out on, on, our, on the record here at the college with a seven minute rebuttal, whether it be nuclear or whatever, and, or whatever you want to strengthen your position. You want to try it? Uh, I don't know if I can talk for seven minutes. Well, it, it doesn't have to be that long. Uh, just, uh, I'll put you down and, uh, 
Well, we'll let Charlie go first to kind of explain yeah. how it's done since a lot that we have a lot of people here that are. Pete, did you want to say anything? I know you've been listening here. And Dan and Ilana, if you want to speak, Lisa, you want to speak at all? Or Barry, you know, anybody else who wants to join in? All right. Um, I guess, well, Charlie, if you want to go, go ahead and uh, do your rebuttal. There's nobody else that seems like they really want to go right away. All right, we'll get it rolling. All right, first of all, I'd like to thank our speaker for uh, make, coming here this evening and thank him for uh, initially a win and lose or draw uh, for exercising good citizenship uh, and wanting to improve uh, our government and the nation that we live in. Uh, I'll be eclectic as usual. I don't have a lot to go on tonight. Uh, first of all, I've been involved in many, many years as a senior officer of the Independent Voters of Illinois. Now, a lot of people don't aware of this, but in our endorsement sessions, which are among the officers, um, the one thing we look at in giving an endorsement is if the individual has put together a viable campaign. Now you're right at the start and that's why we like to invite people to the college so that they get some experience uh, for campaigning. That's one of the positive services we serve. But um, the, that's what I mean. Uh, I would be very, spend some time and effort and I know you will, you have some experience already and putting better a viable campaign. Now, whatever that means is gonna be up to you. Everybody's got views on issues. Even Tim does, even though most of them are wrong and silly. <laughs> but uh, there is the mechanics of getting elected when it comes down to it. That's what I mean. In IVI, our pros and consultants uh, no nonsense people when it comes to campaigning um, and have <clears throat> veterans of many, many campaigns. But sit down, plot your thing, put together your social media, website, develop some platforms, uh, a speech. Uh, that's another thing. I sat through uh, Pritzker's stump speech, we call it right at the beginning of his campaign. And he didn't really say anything, but he said something for everybody there. He talked a little bit about education. He talked about jobs and employment, he talked about unions, and he talked about transportation. He talked about the environment. He talked about agriculture. Now I know it was all canned, but I must say that whoever wrote it covered everything. I don't think there was a constituency out there that he didn't talk about at least a sentence two or three. So that's what I mean. I know it was a scripted speech and he probably didn't even know what it meant, but it was suitable and he could go around the state of Illinois and he memorized it and said the same thing over and over and over again. But I said, well, that's a pretty good speech actually as, as a former speech writer. You know, that's all I want to say. Regarding healthcare, uh, yes, it's certainly, I'm certainly with you all the way on Medicare, single payer, I've been involved in that. I went to Jane Addams Senior Caucus Committee on that. Uh, there's one thing to keep in mind, however, I, I negotiate union contracts. The employees that I represent have 75% of their health insurance paid for by the employer, and they can choose any plan they want. Um, it is not an issue with those people. Uh, that's the only thing. Keep that in mind that, yeah, you're talking to the 50 to 100 million people in particular who are having distressing situations and going without any sort of provision for healthcare whatsoever. But uh, it is not an issue with some individuals. That's what I mean. That even brought some concerns about it. 
Um, the anyhow, that's just about it. Uh, be sure to cover all the issues. At least have something to say. Pick out your favorites, you know. Uh, but uh, sometimes a whole campaign is planned in advance. The calendar is established. You know how to do this. You had, you've done it before. Um, what's your timetable? What are your events? You know, even come back to the college and uh, talk again if you like. You're always welcome. But anyhow, I wish you the best. And representing, I think you'll do a fine job in representing the Green Party of the state of Illinois. And if anything, I'd like to see this policy adopted of putting miniature nuclear reactors all over the state of Illinois, uh, which is allegedly possible these days. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to get one for my neighborhood, Tim. You know, and I'll provide electricity for you everybody. You may soon be able to from <laughs> China in about 10 years, Charlie. Yeah, you need to have your head examined. All right. Thanks <laughs> a lot, Adam. Come again and good luck in the campaign. All right. Who else has a rebuttal? Lee, it'd be a good time to uh, um, talk. I, I would like to say something. Go right ahead, Janice. I'll give you five minutes or whatever you need <laughs> oh, to Yeah, take. I don't need five minutes, but let me go. Um, okay, Adam, I just tried to donate to you, but it's impossible. Also, we I could, want... We could fix that. Uh, I don't have the... I don't have my online pay set up yet, but... I, oh, uh, okay, or, that's it. You could always write a check to Adam Broad for Congress and send it to. Uh, well, put that in the chat. Put it in the chat. I'll be glad to do that, and uh, also yeah. include your name and occupation. Uh, I'll write that in chat right now. Okay. Um, if, and and like secondly, the first donor, when I go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not in the tenth district, so I can't vote for you, but I still can support you. Um, secondly, the NDAA is in the Senate right now. Uh, that's the National Defense Authorization Act. It's at about just under 800 billion, B billion. Um, and the reconciliation package that, uh, you know, the Senate is having trouble pass. Uh, is only 350 billion per year, but that's for 10 years. Um, so the Congress thinks it's okay to fund war at almost a trillion dollars every single year and rising and not fund the people of the United States. So right to the Senate and tell them to cut that budget. I said, cut it by 50%. Fund uh, universal health care, fund reparations, fund infrastructure. What's gonna happen when China attacks us and we're defenseless? Well, you know what? There's something called diplomacy. They're attacking us. They yeah. are not attacking us. They had a speaker at the other college who spent an hour telling us to get ready for war. Uh, yeah, that's because of our that's because of our actions towards uh, Taiwan, probably. At dawn, we slept. <laughs> thanks, to, thanks, uh, Adam. All right, who else? Vicky, you want to say anything, or Michael, Pete, Dan? It's open right now for rebuttals, and then we'll let Adam get the last word, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I just don't know what more to say because I'm not uh, ready to rebut myself tonight. I'm not really, you know, we had that big passionate debate last week, but uh, if there's no other rebuttals, we'll... Uh, we uh, is not going to say any more. But Lee was if you want my there. rebuttal, I'll give it, Adam, but you may not like it. No, I want, I'm, I want you to... Lee, go ahead, go ahead and let's hear it. Go ahead, Lee. Um, well, I love Adam and Lisa. I mean, they're close friends of mine, and 
I am truly fond of them. But if I'm I'm going to be honest, and, and I'd have to think about whether I'm going to donate, I'd have to go through some thought process. And here's why: um, my mind is completely on the future of American democracy, and you know whether you know several years from now I'm going to end up making a decision to you know, move to uh, Scandinavia or someplace like that. Because if it becomes a lost cause, I don't think I want to live here anymore. Um, however, I think I'm we're a long way from that at this point. I, I mentioned that because I got into that conversation with a few people in the last week or two. But um, right now, you know, and I, and I don't know the district. So I don't know how corrupt the district is for myself. I haven't figured that out, you know, and that something I would think about in terms of whether I donate to Adam or not. But um, I'm occupied with fighting off fascism. And um, so I'm not, my, my focus is not on anything else. Um, even it, because if we don't fight the fascism, we can't get the green economy anyway. Um, so that's the problem. We need to pick up three or four senators. And if we do that, then we can abolish the filibuster. And I believe that, you know, between Brian Schatz and Jeff Merkley and Sheldon Whitehouse and even Cory Booker and, you know, the, the, the young guy from New Mexico, who's now the senior senator, and, you know, all these other people that are the, whoever, you know, other you know, Angus King, I mean, whoever, that these people will lead us past this morass if if we can if we can elect, you know, some more um, intelligent people to the US Senate. So um, and you know, and I think that everybody is gonna except for Manchin and Cinema is gonna go along and we're gonna neutralize them. And cinema is gonna be replaced. Um, the majority of the Arizona Senate delegation, the Arizona House delegation right now is Democrat. There's like something like five, four. Okay, so Cinema is not representing the state of Arizona. She is completely a false prophet because for her at the, at the beginning, right after she was elected, she said, oh, I'm following Joe Manchin. Well, that's a bunch of expletive deleted because that's not where her state's at. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at politics in the most accurate way I can, and I want to fight fascism. That's what I want to do. Okay. Um, anybody else who wants to rebut tonight? Lisa, you want to say something? You can either want to rebut or is it just a little too close to home? <laughs> oh, sure, sure, Rabat. Go ahead and let's let's give let's give you some re let's get you some rebuttals. Time, take take some time and tell us what you think. I'm good. I don't I don't have anything. Oh. <laughs> All right. How about how about a plug then? A plug for the candidate? Yeah. Yeah. Anything? Plug anything? Well, plug for the candidate. Plug for no. Broad. Rod for Congress. Rod for Congress. Tell Lee, tell Lee why he needs to send a check. Adam, <laughs> you know, it, it's Adam is very passionate about everything that he has talked about. He's very committed to the policies that he's, you know, Green New Deal, health care. Um, he's just, he's a guy with a really great heart who just wants to work for the people and make things better for people. And I think that's really important. And, um, and I think we need more people in, in government like him for that reason, because a lot of people go into government for very selfish reasons and egotistical reasons. And not that he doesn't have a little bit of an ego. We all do. <laughs> but, <laughs> a little bit. But, but Adam is for the people. And I think that's really important. It's, Thank you in the house. All right, uh, anybody else? Fired, Lee. 
<laughs> okay, Just Barry, go ahead if you want. Uh, I know you've been put you up a thumbs up icon and a applause yeah. icon. Why don't you go ahead and rebut for a little bit, Barry? Uh, this isn't so much as a rebuttal as uh, I tend to be progressive and I, I really agree with uh, a lot of Adam's uh, programs and attitudes and his policies. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm on a fixed income. I don't have a lot of income to be, you know, donating, but I think in Adam's case, I'll, I think I will be volunteering for on his campaign to go door to door, whatever it takes. Cause I want, I want a, a man like, uh, Adam in our in our government, you know, representing us and fighting for our, you know, this climate crisis and this, you know, medical, you know, they estimated a million people will be going bankrupt because of they can't pay medical bills because half of it's because of COVID. But I mean, you know, and even uh, corporate medical care, tens of thousands of, you know, co-pays and all this crap that you have to pay, you know, single payer is is like you know the uh you know the the uh what is it the the government for uh veterans and so on their their program was is single payer so th this is possible in the united states and i think you know we're you know the richest country and all that whole thing that and we have such terrible medical care and we have you know there's so many things that you know biden was trying to fight for in this and it's been turned down because we just don't have enough you know, men, uh, men or women are, you know, representatives of the people and they're in our government and we need more people like Adam in our freaking government. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to actually work for him. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Barry. Really appreciate yeah. that. You don't have to rebut. You can just say any remarks at all. Yeah. I mean, you know, Adam, uh, yeah. If you, uh, I mean, you talk if you about have... whatever you want. Right. You can talk about if the moon is made of green cheese. We got a few more people. Uh, Pete, you want to say something? The moon is a liberal hoax. <laughs> the moon is a liberal hoax. That's funny. Michael, anything you want to add today? Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. All right. Dan, Eliana, anything you want to add real quick as a rebuttal? Okay, well, Adam, you get the last word and we'll uh, leave a little early tonight then, I guess. So, you know, um, we'll officially close after you get your thing. And uh, thanks for coming tonight. And I uh, appreciate uh, appreciate you uh, coming tonight, you know. I, I'm, you know, I'm glad to be here. I'm honored, you know, that people showed up and uh, I appreciate the chance to, there's a, un orthodox setting to announce my candidacy but uh i think it fits and uh, i'm really glad i did it as far as uh and uh, barry i'm i'm, I'm honored and, and uh, that you uh, feel that way about my campaign and uh, and lisa too i don't take your support your support for granted and uh <clears throat> as, for, as for lee on or any of my other friends uh i i make a point of surrounding myself by people of people who who are straight up with me i don't i don't need to be surrounded by people that just tell me what i want to hear and so yeah lee i value lee uh for his commitment to the environment and uh he'll always give it to me uh like you said straight even if he's uh not sure that i'm he needs to think a little bit more and uh, about whether uh, i am going to uh, be a, a threat to the anti-fascist struggle and I got this in a message from an old friend 35 years of friendship and he was very upset that I left the Democratic Party because in his mind I am paving the way for I'm working for the Republicans and I'm, I'm going to I'm going to uh, you know like Brad Schneider would say you know help drive the Democratic Party off a cliff but uh, he's confusing me with Joe Biden and uh, Governor Pritzker, though they're, they're the guys driving the Democratic Party off a cliff. And them and Brad Schneider are doing it just fine by myself. Uh, like I said, when you uh, when you take office and you close uh, one corporate polluter in Willowbrook and let the corporate pollution in Lake County continue because that's a Democratic Party donor. When the African American vote is so important to Democratic Party electoral success, and you elevate two mayors with the 
abysmal records on race relations. You 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 nominate Rahm Emanuel and Pete Buttigieg. I mean, yeah, it's great that he's a smart guy, and I, I think there definitely should be gay cabinet members. They could have found someone who didn't fire the first black police chief of South Bend for uncovering racist policing in South Bend and uh, leave the racist cops on the force and then have one of them murder a man. Um, so that's the danger of, of letting the reactionaries win is when you have leadership like that. And yeah, there's people in the Senate blocking Joe Biden, but uh, Dave Sirota has read a number of compelling articles about Joe Biden not using the full authority and power of the presidency to push his agenda. He is, he is, he is, he is asleep at the wheel. And I'm not being ageist because it wouldn't matter what age he was. Uh, he is uh, failing to to make an honest push to get his agenda. And it is an absolute clown show what the Democratic Party is doing in D.C. So, and I've been on this ride before with the Democratic Party. I've been on this ride. We've all seen this. The where there, you know, you get a Republican president makes a huge mess. Democratic Party comes in, does some damage control, and then an even bigger clown comes in and makes things even worse. I can only shudder to think who's going to be the next Republican president after Trump. I mean, we've had. I mean, we're talking about a party that lost twice to Ronald Reagan. They lost to Donald Trump. I don't care if you only lost once to Donald Trump. You're the party that lost to Donald Trump. You suck at what you do, Democratic Party. It's the only thing you're good for is stopping the Republican Party, and you suck at it. And we talked about the maps before. Like I said, they're getting gerrymandered out of existence all over the country. But fair maps, not a big concern for the Democratic Party. As long as they can make their stupid maps here in Illinois, they're fine with the Republicans blasting them apart all over the country. This is your opposition to the reactionary politics of the Republican Party. It is because they're both owned by the same people. It is a corporate duopoly. I hate to just start using party lines. It's a great term the Greens use. It is, I like maybe Gerald Zimmerman had it best. It is a pro wrestling show. It's not in the script for the Democratic Party to hit the Republican Party over the back of the head with the folding chair. It's the script that they get hit over the back. And uh, they use these great voter suppression tactics against reformers here in Chicago and in Illinois, but then seem helpless against those same tactics to get used over and over again. They got ripped off in Florida in 2000, and it, it didn't it didn't seem to matter that much to them. They had 16 years to come up with a response to what the Republicans did in Florida in 2000, and instead they let the Trump campaign do the same thing on a regional basis as far as voter suppression, kicking people off the rolls, and they saw the Republicans doing it from a mile away, and then it's like, oh, we suck at we, what we do. Tip jar. I'm done with that. Uh, Adam, <laughs> uh, can I ask about money in politics? Would you um, work to get the sure. money out of politics? It's so corrupting. It is one of my major, you know, if I had to make three, you know, points of this campaign, it would be... Uh, Money out of politics is definitely one, and remedy for climate emergency, definitely the other, and probably healthcare reform. Thank you. So, healthcare reform, you could maybe tuck it under money out of politics because the you know the 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 corrupt corporate healthcare system we have is part of the legalized bribery we have in in our political system, and. Uh, I have a congressman, you know, he's seen as a, as a good Democrat. He used to be seen as a progressive. I had uh, the party chair of Lake County, the current party chair, Lauren Beth Gash, once tell me that Brad Schneider is a progressive. Um, and I told her that the litmus test was Medicare for all. That was a quest, according to jo Joseph Gervarsis of the Our Revolution said, if you're not for Medicare for all, you're not a progressive. But uh, Brad has stopped pretending to be a progressive. He is now sending mailers and writing blogs decrying the radical left progressives in the Democratic Party 
and saying that they want to drive the Democratic Party off a cliff and um, oh, you know, now, like I said, that's he's confusing me with himself, his president and uh, his governor. They are driving the Democratic Party off a cliff, um, screwing up the unemployment benefits. No one knows where the money went. Dead people, babies getting unemployment checks. I did not get my furlough pay from last December. I just got a letter denying my effort to backdate my claim, even though I was, you know, I was unemployed. I was on furlough. You know, like I said, dead people got unemployment. Babies got unemployment. I don't get mine. And no one knows where the money went. I think we know some of the money went. I was like, what, a trillion dollars? Just completely mismanaged yeah i, I think that yeah, they're going to lose elections just fine without me helping them i'm just trying to build an alternative because we have to what else are we going to do we can't like lee said we can't just let the uh the, these lunatics take over again the, we can't let fascism win but i think that's the plan as far as the money is concerned they don't care about democracy or else why would they be why would they have funded the you know the lunatic king president and the insurrection, uh, why would they be funding that? Why And why would the Democrats accept that the same people are funding these uh, neo-lib, third-way, blue dog people like Brad? And uh, the, most people just don't look that deep. They don't care that Brad is connected to Coke Industries and the banks and uh, the usual suspects and uh, probably don't even know that the Dems sold them out on the ETO pollution here in Lake County. I don't know. Now, I know there's good Dems that don't want that kind of pollution, but uh, not as far as the leadership goes. They're they're in it for the money and the power, and they, you know, they don't they don't care about these uh, these ideological things. That it's okay. Envelope, envelopes of cash. How many slots for their buddies? Uh huh. All right. Um. Well, it looks like you've got a lot of things in here. Uh, and I guess we'll just uh, we'll end the official recording now for the college and I'll keep the Zoom call open for anybody who'd like to uh, stop it. So we'd like to welcome everybody to the college and thank you very much for attending. So